afternoon, everybody. Um, finding myself here in the wilderness of um, the Canadian uh, mountains, uh, just out here doing a bit of some exploration. Um, so I thought I would dial in and uh, uh, record a little video uh, sequence for you guys uh, for our first week of the COVID-19 circuit breaker measures. You all know you'll be very busy there back in Singapore studying and working hard doing home learning um, so unfortunately I won't be able to be with you and we won't be able to meet since uh, we have to observe very strict uh, social distancing measures and stay at home as much as possible um, however um, we've been asked to uh, put together a little weekly video session for you guys uh, a lesson uh, each week to uh, get you guys to continue engaging with our CCA program. So with our Expedition Skills uh, CCA, um, it's my uh, honor to be uh, the first to uh, record a little video sequence for you. Um, so I'm just, I uh, thought you liked the background, uh, you know, birds are chirping there. Um, so I'm out here uh, doing a bit of exploration. So I thought what um, I would like you guys to try and do this week, um, is to uh, get you guys to continue with your own exploration and application of the expedition skills uh, that we've been learning. Uh, I think the best way to do that, uh, while we need to adhere to these strict circuit breaker measures, uh, would be to try and uh, go out and combine this with um, uh, your daily walks, your daily activities of keeping, uh, getting some fresh air and uh, staying fit. So um, I would for this week that you all go out and uh, start doing some bio blitz activities so um, obviously I'm going to just outline the exact terms of this how we're going to behave to ensure that we're not putting ourselves at risk and we're adhering to the government guidelines so you'll see uh, I've got all the, the tools with me here today I've got the uh, compass very important to always have a compass with you yeah so you don't get lost of course, really key to have your binoculars ready in case you spot something on the horizon. That rare bird. And then lastly, very important, is to have your camera. Ideally not your granddad's camera, like mine here, but to have a camera ready for recording your observations. So that is going to be the key for this activity. So, am I missing something? What am I missing? Oh, oh yes, the all essential mask. As you all well know, we now cannot leave home without a mask. So you do need to wear your, um, your government has provided um, reusable masks. So you need to put your mask on before you leave the house to make sure you don't uh, stand the risk of infecting others, getting infected or getting a fine. So please, put your mask on, put on your mask, get your compass out, put your binoculars ready, and importantly, your camera. And I would also suggest you bring with you a pen and a notepad. So uh, a notebook, a field notebook, where you can take some notes of your observations. Um, I'm gonna just stop this video uh, recording. I'm gonna go uh, get back into the forest here because I've got some grizzlies pulling up just behind me. So I gotta make a move. Um, so I'm gonna be with you back in a second with a screen recording of how I would like you to continue with this um, bio blitz activity that I proposed for this week. Cheerio! Oh, oh, really coming. which is where I thought I'll uh, continue the recording and um, take you guys through a little bit more of the Bible's activity and why we're doing this and how we'd like you to carry this out. So 
I'm going to switch now to uh, screen share so you can see what's happening on my screen and I can demonstrate to you a little bit of the BioBlitz activity. Now, on our website, uh, let me just go to it, you'll find on our homepage, if you go to our course overview website, here we go, CC Expedition Skills, uh, you all know the website, you can see this website address up here. Um, you need to go to the quarter one jungle life section and at the bottom there's a section for quarter 1.5 wildlife of Singapore. Um, you'll find here a little photo collage that I did of some of my own observations. Ever since I arrived in Singapore I started observing and started recording my observations of wildlife because I was fascinated by the huge diversity of wildlife you find here. Uh, this uh, photo collage is actually of uh, only a few photographs that I took over the space of one or two, one and a half days while my brother was visiting. That's uh, the chap here. Uh, we look very much alike. The massive moth on his arm. Um, over the space of one and a half days, so one evening walk in the Bukatima Nature Reserve and, uh, and, a, and a daytime walk through some of the local parks. Uh, we spotted a vast range of, dive, of animals, so you can see anything from a waggless pit viper, plantain squirrel, sliders ter terrapin, some green crested lizards, plenty of spiders, golden orb weaver spider, um, interesting huntsman spiders here, enormous moths as I just pointed out, some great butterflies, toads and frogs, some great mammals as well, some otters here up in the reservoirs and colugos. Uh, on some of the palm trees. So enormous variety of wildlife you can see if you keep your eyes and ears open and really look at not just the big stuff, but also some of the smaller things here, some of the macro photography here of some, some snails and other insects. So on this website, I also included uh, uh, a few links uh, to uh, what, sites where you can that help you with IDing, identifying what it is you, you're observing. Um, the way I've been recording my wildlife observations is through this uh, little Excel spreadsheet, which is what you can also use to record your observations. Um, I divided it up into the main animal phyla, birds, reptiles, amphibians, mammals, butterflies, moths, spiders, dragonflies and damselflies, insects, other insects, and some of the aquatic animals, which I just recently added. Um, you can see here from the bird species, I started this back in uh, 2015 when I first arrived in Singapore. Uh, uh, these are all my photographs, so I kept them as a record of what I saw. It's always better to identify, easier to identify an animal when if you've got a good photograph of it. Um, you can see all the birds. Birds are probably the ones I saw most of. There's enormous variety of birds out there in Singapore, so very g blessed with uh, such a huge biodiversity in Singapore. Um, some of these pictures also include uh, uh, trips that I did to the local area like Thailand and Malaysia um, and even as far away as Japan uh, and Sulawesi um, and, and some even in, in Fiji Island where I went with our students uh, last year. Um, so you can see a large variety of birds. Um, some of them I couldn't actually get a photograph of myself, so I picked a, a photograph from Google, which is also fine if you were if you're unsure of what you saw. Um, some of the reptiles are really, really exciting. Actually, some of the lizards here and snakes, exciting photographs of some snakes here. Um, <clears throat> and more recently, actually, just this last weekend, I spotted some of the most exciting findings here. A very rare Asian forest tortoise that I've spotted in. in actually picked it up which you shouldn't really do um don't really interact with the wildlife leave it uh, it's wild you don't really want to be picking things up tortoise in this case obviously was quite trilled out so i didn't mind so much um but yeah just yesterday i saw a very rare white bellied white uh, blind snake uh, which is very very spotted because it's generally underground um but uh, it helps with uh, recordings amphibians, uh, mammals, some exciting stuff. Yesterday we saw two sunbar deer, which is only the second time I've seen those. This is not my photograph. This is one photograph I took at night once. Uh, so I didn't actually get there very fast, but I, I spotted them and you can identify them. And you're, it's the only animal that this large in, in Singapore forest. So I knew that it was a sunbar deer, but wasn't able to get a much better photograph than this facial shot here. Um, Lots of interesting butterflies. Again, 
it's useful to have a bit of a macro, macro lens for photographs like this, especially things like spiders, where you want to get close up and, and uh, take some good macro photographs. Just be aware, don't touch the animals, stay, give them the respectable distance. Um, so this is one way of recording them. Um, however, there's another way. Um, I've also taken video recordings, which is often a better way of identifying and subsequently uh, having a good record of the animal. Um, so these are some of the short videos I took of some of the uh, animals I s uh, spotted. At the bottom of the page, you'll see the link to the Bio Blitz activity. Now, what is a Bio Blitz activity? Now, if you click on the iNaturalist Bio Blitz guide, iNaturalist is a very exciting website. It's a tool online um, that helps you record your own observations. It's used by uh, over 2 million people in the world today uh, and is used by scientists and experts in the field to record observations and do studies. They use it to, for scientific research uh, to look at the distribution of animal species uh, in certain areas uh, and allows you to upload all sorts of interesting facts about and, and observations of the animals that you saw. And so I would encourage you to join iNaturalist, check with your parents. It's, uh, it's, uh, I don't think there's an age restriction to joining iNaturalist. It simply sets you up with a profile um, where you can upload your various photographs and observations. Um, this is a, an overview here of what a BioBlitz is. Now, we're not actually going to be doing a BioBlitz in this case because it does require you to meet with others and with experts for a, a, a day or a period of time, a few hours to do uh, by actually blitz or uh, record every species that you found in a certain area over a certain period of time. Um, but what we will be using is our observation skills to record our own observations. So in the BioBlitz guide, you'll find some guides towards um, how to use um, the video tutorials here, how to use iNaturalist to record your observations. So you can use some of those pre-recorded screen uh, recordings here um, to, and I encourage you to view all of those. Uh, here's one that shows you how to make an observation with your phone on iNaturalist. Um, here's another one, how to add observations via the web. Um, uh, at home, when you download your photos from your camera, you can upload them to the iNaturalist website. Um, how to take identifiable photos, so you can actually see the key characteristics of what the animal uh, looks like in order to be able to identifying it, identify it. How, use to, how to use the identify page on iNaturalist. Um, how to geotag them, so look at the geographical location of where you took the photograph, uh, and so on. So this is a really useful site that I would encourage you to have a look at and, uh, and sign up to this. Here, I'm already uh, in my own account, so I can just briefly show you what my dashboard looks like at the moment. I recently uploaded an observation of a bronzeback, which I think is a bronzeback. Um, I haven't actually got the exact uh, uh, identification yet, although already somebody has already identified it for me. They agreed that it was a bronze back, but I don't think we have yet identified the species. So I agree it is a bronze back, but I'm not sure what species it is. So I'm still waiting for someone. It's probably maybe difficult from these two photographs to uh, ID this properly, um, because as you can see, there's not many features identifiable to get it down to species level. Um, but we'll see whether I get something back. Um, Other observations uh, I recently uploaded. Here are my um, other observations. You can see I haven't uploaded a huge number of them. I mainly used it where I was unsure about what it was or if I saw something really special. For example, the Asian forest tortoise is actually only been observed once before. Um, so if I click on Asian forest tortoise, it shows me all of the observations of this animal. Um, this is somebody else's observation. But you can see here where it's been observed. And actually in Singapore, there's only one observation, which is mine. So it's very exciting to see, um, if you place it on the water, but um, where this, uh, where this uh, animal has been found and the fact that it's only really been recorded by me in Singapore. So that's really exciting. Here's some great photographs, lots of identifiable features. It was unmistakably uh, in Asian forest tortoise. So really exciting. Um, 
other observations I've added were more of the sort of things where I'm unsure what, what animal it was. Um, so people helped me identify it. Um, or if I saw something really exciting like the Sunda Slow Loris, which I spotted in Human Island, uh, really exciting animal, this one. So you can either use iNaturalist or use a spreadsheet like this or any other way of recording your um, observations. Obviously helpful to note down when you saw it, any other uh, observation notes um, that you can add. Uh, what the animals just doing maybe at the time. For example, recently I spotted a whole group of different birds all seem seemingly hunting in a sort of um, commensalistic or symbiotic relationship where they were following each other through the trees and basically um, helping each other hunt for insects. Really interesting behavior, maybe not something that has actually even been recorded yet. So some interesting aspects, if you see some interesting behavior added to your observation, um, and what I'd like you to do, so I'm just going to stop the screen recording now, um, is stop sharing, here we go, uh, is to uh, do this over the next uh, week. And certainly I would uh, uh, suggest you continue this um, and we ongoingly share our uh, observations via Teams. Uh, so if you share your observation document, uh, uh, let us know if you're an iNaturalist. We can view your observations on iNaturalist via your profile. Uh, and this way we can actually uh, really build up a, a database of observations uh, from our group and we can facilitate and support the scientific community and their research with their um, with, with iNaturalist for, uh, and, and it, it gives you a bit more of a chance to be more formal about the way you go about uh, observing animals and, and for, flora and fauna out in the uh, in, in Singapore's nature reserves. So really important, make sure you don't forget, put that mask on, you know, get yourself out there, get, make sure you don't go on your own, bring someone with you um, from your family and household, nobody outside, no friends you're allowed to meet with at the moment. So make sure it's uh, either your parents or a sibling. Um, go uh, and, and be careful when you're out there, bring your essentials like a water bottle, sunscreen and insect repellent, very important, um, but really important to bring that mask. Um, and then get out there, don't forget your camera and your binoculars and you are ready to go. Um, just introduce it into your daily routine and I'm very excited to see what you are gonna come back with and um, yeah. All right. Well, I'll leave you with this. And um, next week, my uh, uh, Miss Julius will be recording another activity for you, um, something different. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Um, but for the time being, try and get those observations done and uh, enjoy. So hopefully that will be a nice balance to your home uh, based learning at the moment and will get you out a little bit into the fresh air and nature. Enjoy and see you next week. Bye bye.